Okay, so this is the last lecture, lecture 14. Uh, we'll discuss the, the methods of uh, data collection for qualitative uh, research. One of the methods of the collecting data is using the interview where the researchers will go and find the respondents and ask them questions. <clears throat> the researchers will have a set of questions. We call the interview protocol. Yeah, you need the researchers need to have a set of questions, yeah, set of valid questions before going to interview the respondents. So interview is uh, primarily used to gain an understanding of the underlying reasons and motivations for people's attitude, preferences, or behavior. So we de depending on the objectives of the study and the title of the study, so the researchers will uh, will uh, uh, construct, yeah, we construct or will write uh, a set of questions we call the interview protocols. So there are two types of interview where you can go face to face, uh, make an appointment, go face to face and meet the respondents uh, in person. Yeah? Uh, or you can use a in telephone interview, or nowadays you can use Zoom or or any other methods where you don't have to see the the uh, interviewees in person, but you can just either call them or use the uh, you know uh, uh, Zoom or Google Meet or whatever. Uh, whatever methods. So let's go with a personal interview. So the, the advantages of personal interview is a serious response by the respondent. So when you go and see the person face-to-face uh, -face or using Zoom, so uh, you get a serious response and that will lead to accurate information and good response rates. <coughs> the only problem is if the if the interviewees are very important person. So you, some researchers will have <coughs> trouble to set uh, an, an, an appointment. Yeah? Sometimes it's very difficult. <clears throat> For example, the the interviewees are very important persons. Uh, sometimes you need to contact the uh, personal assistants. Yeah, there are situations where the person is very busy, and, and uh, it's difficult to 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 contact. So the best way is to find the, the uh, personal assistance or anybody that, that is close to the person. And uh, the other advantage is, is the other advantage is uh, the, 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 the answer is complete and immediate and, and it's possible in that questions based on the answers given by the respondents, the researchers can ask the um, follow up questions yeah interviewer in control and can give help if there is a problem uh, the in, the uh, interviewer can also investigate motives and feelings by asking follow up questions can use recording equipment okay uh, you can uh, record uh, the the conversations but uh, you need to first ask the permission. Uh, character, characteristics of respondents assessed, tone of voice, facial expression, hesitation, etc. 
if one interviewer used in uniformity of approach used to pilot other methods. Disadvantages of uh, interview is need to set up interviews. Sometimes it's um, difficult when the interviewees, the person you want to interview is uh, very busy. So that is a challenge. Uh, it, it is sometimes it's time consuming because it's difficult to find the, the appropriate time for you and for the researcher and for the interviewees. And sometimes uh, geographic uh, limitations, uh, if you want to go for face-to-face, -face, then uh, if the interviewees live far from far away from you, then then uh, it, it's kind of, it's, it's a limitation. Yeah? It can be expensive. Uh, normally, normally needs uh, a set of questions. We call the interview protocols. Uh, and sometimes it, it involves respondent bias, tendency to please or impress. Uh, some respondents, they give uh, the answers that uh, try to please the, the researcher. They will give the, the good image. Yeah? Embarrassment possible if, if touch personal questions. Uh, transcription and analysis can present problems if many interviewers uh, needed training required. So, for example, you want to interview many people, then you might have to ask other people to interview, and you need to give the training how to interview to, to your uh, research uh, assistants. Any question, Mr. Somko? Uh, yeah, what um the next question could be uh theory. Is it also followed by any theory when doing a qualitative? Yeah, good question. For qualitative uh, research, you don't need any uh prior theory. Uh, okay. Yeah, the researchers, some of the researchers, they uh, they are blank, uh, meaning. They don't have any prior theory. They just go and uh, ask questions and uh, get the data, analyze the data. After the yes. data analysis, they will come up with their own theory. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you don't need any theoretical framework to interview. OK, that's about my question. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, for qualitative data, you don't need any theoretical framework of the study. Because in uh, qualitative research, uh, what we do is we use the inductive approach. Inductive approach means you start from uh, zero theory. Okay. And you go and uh, collect the data, right? And then uh, you analyze the data. And then the end result is you come up with your own uh, theory. Okay. So it is it's the reverse of quantitative research. For quantitative research, you have to start with theoretical framework first, right? And yeah. then you go and collect the data, for example, using questionnaire, and then uh, you analyze the data. And then in the end, you want to support or reject your theoretical framework and your hypothesis. So the, the process is reversed. Quantitative, you start with your hypothesis, and then you collect data, and then last, you want to reject or accept the hypothesis. But for, quant for qualitative research, you don't have any prior hypothesis. So you go out and collect the data, and then uh, analyze the data. From the data, you come up with your own theory. Not it. OK, there are three types of interview. One is structured interview. Structured interview, um, 
you would have uh, interview protocol or interview schedule. So in the interview schedule, you need to carefully uh, word it. You need to carefully write uh, the questions. Yeah. So you need a carefully worded interview schedule. Interview schedule means set of questions that are written prior to going for the interview. So, yeah. And then uh, uh, for structured questions, the, the questions are usually short and the answers are usually short answers also. So frequently require short answers with the answers being ticked off. Uh, structured questions, structured interview are useful when there are a lot of questions which are not particularly contentious or thought provoking. So you want to avoid any, any, you know, thought provoking questions. Uh, you don't, you don't want to provoke uh, the, the respondents, yeah? Respondent may be irritated by having to give oversimplified answers. For example, you you want to interview professors, yeah, and then if if you require only short answers, the professors might might be irritated. Yeah? He might say, "Oh, I have I want to say something. I have a lot more to say, so you cannot cut." You cannot cut the answer. And then semi-structured is the uh, interview is focused by asking certain questions that are very specific, yeah? but with scope for the respondents to express him or herself at length. So uh, unlike the first type structure, the semi-structured, you allow the respondents to give a long answers. For unstructured uh, interviews, it is an in-depth interview. You begin by asking a general question, then you encourage the respondent to talk freely. The respondents are free to talk. And then the subsequent direction of the interview will be determined by the respondent's initial reply. So for unstructured uh, interview, you don't need uh, many questions prepared before going to the interview. You can have a very general questions and then you can follow up uh, uh, your questions depending on the answers given by the respondents. Let me give you an example of unstructured uh, interview. Yeah? So for example, I want to study the factors that influence people to pay income zakat. Yeah? So my general question is, number one, I would say, uh, sir, uh, can you tell me if uh, you pay income zakat to uh, zakat institutions or you pay directly to, uh, to the asna? Okay, then the respondents, the interviewees will respond, give answers, and then you follow up. For example, the respondents say, uh, actually, I pay directly to the, uh, to the uh, Zakat institutions and, uh, recently, but uh, before, a long time ago, I used to pay directly to, to us now. So, for example, if the, interview, if the interviewee answer that way, then you can follow up. Okay, when you can uh, ask questions like, okay, sir, before uh, a long time ago, you, you, you paid directly to us now. Can you tell me why you paid di directly to us now? Okay, for example. So, based on the questions, you follow up. So you begin by asking a general question and then you encourage the respondents to talk freely and you follow up the questions 
based on the response or the reply by the interviewees. Okay, you can, uh, you know, you can ask questions like, why do you say that? Okay, for example, the respondents say, oh, um, I think uh, it's better to pay uh, income zakat directly to Asna. Then you say, oh, why? Why you say that? Why is it uh, important to pay directly to zakat institutions? Okay, you can follow up like, why do you say that? Uh, or you can say, oh, that's interesting. Can you tell me more? Or you can say, would you like to add something else? So those are the type of questions um, for unstructured interview. Any any questions on, on, on this one? This is basically one of the popular methods for the qualitative research. No question. No question means you understand everything. <laughs> okay, how to plan for an interview? Number one, list the areas. Uh, the areas means uh, the type of uh, questions uh, you want to ask, and then who you are going to to uh, interview and the location. And then decide on the type of interview. You Do you want to go for a structured interview or semi-structured interview or unstructured interview? Okay, transform areas into actual questions. Areas means the general uh, questions you want to ask, the questions you want to ask and then transform it into actual questions. And then try them out. You can try uh, to your friends before you go for the actual interview. And then you make an uh, appointment with the respondents. Now, this is the challenging part. Some of the respondents are not uh, free. They are busy. So it's very important that you make the proper arrangement. If you cannot find the, if you cannot contact the actual respondent and the respondent is very busy, you might have to contact anybody close to the person, for example, the personal assistant. They make appointment and discussing details and try and fix a venue and time. That is for face-to-face uh, for -face interview. If you want to use a uh, Google Google uh, Meet, yeah. If you want to use Google Meet or or uh, Zoom, then you you fix the time, yeah. Fix the time, give the link to the respondents, and then uh, you you can interview using Google Meet or 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 Zoom or any other you know any other. Uh, methods. Steps in conducting an interview uh, arrive on time. So if you you know you have to be on time, be smart, smile, employ good manners, find a balance between friendliness and objectivity. Then you introduce yourself. Uh, you uh, you explain the purpose of the interview. And you assure the respondents that that uh, the it is confidential. That means uh, the 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 particulars of the respondents are not going to be revealed. Okay, it is confidential. Uh, speak slowly in a soft yet audible tone of voice. Yeah, Mr. Sonko. You have to speak yeah. like me. Yeah. Okay. Speak slowly in the soft. Uh, yet okay. Control of voice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, control your body language. Know the questions and topic, and ask all the questions. If you are nervous, yeah, you need to relax. Uh, control yourself. Usually, we are nervous when we 
interview very important people. Yeah, for example, if you want to interview uh, CEOs or VIPs, you know, people that are very important, then you need to be, uh, you, you need to control yourself, try to speak in a uh, soft, uh, yet uh, uh, a smooth, yeah? Control your body language. You have to know the questions. Yeah. It's very bad if you go and you forgot the questions. You say, oh, sir, sorry, I forgot my questions. <laughs> so that's not good, yeah? You have to know yeah. the questions. Yeah? Try to memorize the questions. Or if you forget, then you, you can read from from the uh, interview in schedule. Eh? We call interview schedule where you have the questions. So record as you go on questionnaire. So when when the so as you go and ask questions, make sure that you record. Uh, you can use many, you know, you can use handphone or or any other recording device, and make sure you ask permission from the respondents, and make sure that he give permission before you record. And if you use Zoom yeah, or Google Meet or some other device, of course you can record. But of, uh, of course you need to ask permission. Ask okay. if... Any question? You can ask. So ask if the respondents would like to give further details about anything or any questions about the research and thank them. Okay. Okay, and then you can use a telephone interview or interview using Zoom or or, or Google Meet. So advantages of using Zoom or telephone interview is it's cheap, yeah, quick. So for example, the person is in Kuala Lumpur and you're in Kuala Ketil. So it's, it's cheap. You don't have to go to the Kuala Lumpur. Eh? Yeah. And uh, can cover reasonably large numbers of people or organizations. It's, it's much easier, it's cheaper, it's faster. Uh, wide geographic coverage. So for example, you want to inter interview people from Malaysia. And Mr. Sonko, you are in Uganda. So if yeah. you zoom, then you can cover a wide geographic area. So it doesn't matter. Uh, All right. So so it's much faster. Yeah? And high response rate, uh, no waiting, spontaneous response. Help can be given to the respondent if the respondent is not clear about anything. So just like the face-to-face, -face, uh, using uh, online also, uh, you can you can easily ask questions, and you can record the answers. Yeah, if you use Zoom, for example, you can make the recording. Disadvantages is a questionnaire required. Yeah, you need you need to have the interview protocols uh, or the interview schedule yeah? or the set of questions. And not everyone has a telephone. If the person doesn't have telephone, or, but nowadays it's very difficult to find anybody who doesn't have telephone yeah? or doesn't have computer. So if the person doesn't have computer, doesn't have, then uh, it be a little bit of problem, but I think, I think, uh, realistically, everybody has a phone, everybody has a laptop. Yeah? Okay. The disadvantages is repeat calls are inevitable. Sometimes the person is not available, then you have to set another appointment. Time is wet wasted in getting the interview, because sometimes the person is busy, and when the time, 
uh, our appointment is on, the person is not available. You have to wait again. And then straightforward questions are required. The respondent has little time to think. Uh, I think I think for uh, for use using online Zoom or Google Meet, there's no problem. Yeah? If you use telephone, then then uh, I cannot use visual aids. Yeah? You, if you use telephone. And can cause irritation if you use telephone. So I think it's better if you use uh, online interview. Yeah. Okay, getting started, you need to locate the respondent and getting them to agree to take part. Yeah. You need to convince them to take part because uh, their participation is is uh, valuable you can say like sir or prof please um, participate in this survey because your respondents your response are critical to the uh, findings of this study okay so th this these are the tips yeah you need a good set of que quest not questionnaires yeah? You need a good set of questions. Yeah? You need a good set of questions. Uh, need to be an able interviewer. Yeah, you, have, you need to ask good questions. You need to keep an interview schedule. Interview schedule means uh, the a set of questions that you want to ask the respondents. So each interview schedule should have a cover page with number, name, and address. So a proper interview schedule should have a cover page, yeah, your name, the title of the research, and uh, the set of questions that you want to ask. Uh, the, the cover page must have number, uh, must have your name, and your, your address. Yeah? Okay, so the, 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 those are for uh, using uh, interview, yeah? those are the interview methods. For quantitative, usually we use uh, questionnaire, yeah? So for, uh, for quality, sorry, for quantitative studies, uh, we use uh, questionnaires. Questionnaires is one of uh, uh, more popular methods of data collection in the uh, quantitative studies. So questionnaires is a popular means of collecting data, but are difficult to design because you need to have questionnaire uh, items, yeah? questionnaire items or the questions to be asked often require many rewrites before an acceptable questionnaire is produced, can be used as a method or in its own right or as a basis for interviewing or telephone survey. So you need, so questionnaire is popular for quantitative research. Yeah? The advantages of questionnaire can be posted, email or fax, can cover a large number of people, wide geographic coverage, now we use uh, either face-to-face -face, uh, data collection or we use uh, e-surveys. So it's relatively cheap, especially if you use e-surveys. No prior arrangements are needed. Avoids embarrassment on the part of the respondent. Respondent can consider responses, possible anonymity, Anonymity, anonymity of respondent, no interviewer bias. Disadvantages, design problems. So some the, the, the problems with questionnaire is you need to write the questionnaire items. You need to make sure that the questionnaire items are valid and reliable. You need to do the pilot test. Yeah? Questions have to be simple. So all the questions must be uh, 
valid and reliable. So historically low response rate. So this is one of the problems, um, the low response rate. But I find that there are some uh, researchers, some PhD students who are lucky because the response rate is very high. So it depends on the type of respondents. Time delay while waiting for responses to be returned, require a return deadline, several reminders may be required, assumes no literacy problems. If the respondents cannot read, uh, then, then there's a problem. No control over who completes it, uh, especially if you use e-service, you, you're not sure who answers the, the questionnaires. Sometimes you give to person A, it might be his wife, it might be his son, or it might be his, his uh, student, his friend who answered the questions. So you, you, you cannot control over who completes the, the questionnaire. <clears throat> Okay, those, those are some of the disadvantages of questionnaire. And then uh, the other method is observation. Observation is also a popular method for qualitative research. Number one is a complete observation. Sometimes, okay. <clears throat> Some some is written in Bahasa, observation, yeah. complete participation. Complete participation means complete participant. Yeah? That means the researchers also <clears throat> participate in any activities done by the respondents. So that is called complete participant. Number two is observer as participant. Here the researcher doesn't participate in the activities. The, observe, the <coughs> researcher just observe whatever the activities done by the, the respondents. Any questions so far? So observation number three, the, the informant, the participant as observer. Participant becomes observer. This is very rare. And number four, complete observer. Complete observer means the the researcher doesn't participate at all. The researcher just observe. I find that none of PhD students at Unisham's have done this type of data collection. <laughs> because usually observation uh, requires the the researcher to be in a specific location, either to observe and participate or just become observer. But you need to go to the that particular location, and usually it's time consuming. It's not easy to to collect the data. And then we have secondary data collection. Uh, so secondary data collection is, second, secondary data is data that has already been collected by someone else. You can find in, uh, in um, a yearly report or data, any data supplied by some organizations. 
uh, there is uh, there is a institution, for example, uh, IMF, uh, International Monetary Fund, to provide uh, secondary data on all macroeconomic variables. You can purchase the data. Okay, what else? This this is a, a common method used in qualitative data called triangulation. But in Bahasa, triangulasi. In English, triangulation. Oh, the, this is in Barca. Okay. So I think I will skip that one because it's, it's very rarely used in in uh, by PhD students. Eh? Okay. Mr. Sonko, let let's share. Okay. Can we share your your assignment too? So that it can help others also. Oh, okay. Can we share your your assignment? Let me. Uh, let me try to find. Let, let, let me download. Yes, you can download. Maybe. I can download, and I will. We will discuss. Huh? Yes, yes. Okay, this is assignment two by Mrs. Sonko. So the title is The Determinants of Intention to Adopt Takaful in Uganda Using the Moderating Role of Religiosity. So, and then it has chapter one. Okay, introduction, chapter one, introduction, overview. Okay, and then background of the study. And then problem statement, and research questions, research objectives, your general objective, specific objectives, Justification of the study, scope of scope of the scope. It should be scope of the study. <laughs> Significance of the study. Yeah, it should be scope of the study. <laughs> should be scope of the study, yeah. Yeah.
Okay, and the significance of the study, theoretical significance, practical significance, contributions of the study, contributions to knowledge, contributions to policy and authority, contributions to Muslim and non-Muslim community, limitations of the study, structure of the study. So that's chapter one. Chapter two, you have historical background. So you did uh, for my case, uh, Professor. Yes. Yes, uh, let me explain my courage for, for chapter two. Okay, go ahead. Uh, for my case, uh, I have four chapters um, about the proposal. I found out that um, with my chapter one, in case I I intended to write everything about uh, okay. a full and the components of chapter one, it could be more broad. So what I decided, I divided the chapter, I cut part of the work from chapter one, especially the concept of the couple, and I put it under chapter two. So specifically, chapter two is explaining about to Takaful and the related sections. Okay. Yeah, so I have four chapters. Okay, good, good. And then chapter three is literature review. Yeah, that is it. Yeah. Literature review about... Yes. First introduction and then theory of planned behavior, and then diffusion innovation theory. Yeah. <laughs> some of the <clears throat> some of the variables are taken from <clears throat> diffusion innovation theory, right? And yes. also the theory of planned behavior. <clears throat> and then Takafu determinants, you have attitude, subjective norm. Perceived behavioral control, self efficacy, relative advantage, profits and loss sharing, religiosity, and then uh, uh, religiosity as moderating, and then the intention. And then, chapter four methodology you have introduction, research design theoretical framework. So in this theoretical framework, you have attitude, subjective norms, perceived behavioral control, uh, relative uh, advantage, and religiosity. That, that, that is all, eh? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. religiosity, as you can see, Okay. Religiosity is uh, both the independent and the moderating. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you consider one more variable just to make it very different from TPB? So you have Attitude, subjective norms, perceived behavioral control from TPB. And then just one relative advantage. If possible. I have a relative advantage. Yeah, if possible, can you find one more from DIT? If possible. Later, later on. The for, okay. for the purpose of this class is excellent. You get A already for this class. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. And then uh, you have hypothesis development or hypothesis formulation. Okay, good. And then this one, hypothesis formulation of attitude and then subjective norms, perceived behavioral control, uh, relative advantage, religiosity, and religiousity as moderating. And then you have operational definition, 
here you need to explain how you are going to uh, measure yeah yes that's what i did yeah so you have operational definition for endogenous variable you have intention and uh, yeah endogenous only one yeah intention and then yeah for, it is only one Exogenous, you have attitude and then the subjective norms, perceived behavioral control, relative advantage, and religiosity. So is that enough? <laughs> okay, and then data. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Professor. Uh, for attitude, uh, we can still discuss, yeah? Okay. okay. For attitude, so you you collected from these people, yeah. So you have five. You have seven. Yes. Okay. And the subjective norm. Okay. Perceived behavioral control. Relative advantage. Okay. And then the questionnaire design. Organization of questionnaire, unit of analysis, population and sampling, sample size, and then pilot study. Pilot study, you, you have not done yet, yeah? Yeah, it is what I'm working on right now. Okay. So after this, we will do the pilot test. Yeah? So for the purpose of this class, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yes. you did very well. So you get an A already for this class. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, maybe they are might be any question from my colleagues. Oh yeah, from my any, work. Any questions from from uh, from other students? Please have question. Maybe doc, um, Mr. Sonko will answer your question. Don't be shy to ask, Mr. Sonko. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, go ahead if you have any question. So, main supervisor is Dr. Muhammad Tahir Che Omar, and co supervisor yes. is Associate Professor Dr. Yusuf Haji Othman. And yes, pa. My, my name you put in. in uh small eh? because course provider <laughs> oh i didn't know okay <laughs> no, it's, it's okay all right <laughs> no no i did it and it <laughs> uh, maybe because uh course provider the name should be small <laughs> <laughs> i reached you know not intended to do that no, no problem. I'm just joking. So, okay. Any any questions from other students? It looks like there is no question. All right, all right. Wonderful. 
So let me remind everybody, please send your assignment one and assignment two to Google Classroom today or tomorrow. Pak Daddy, kapan mau submit? Pak Daddy, hari ini atau besok? Kapan ya? Pak Adi? Ya, Prof, maaf tadi di mute ya. Untuk saya insya Allah besok. Karena tadi ada sedikit perubahan judul. Jadi, uh, Pak Dedi uh, sudah siap chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Sudah siap ya? Belum, Prof. Insya Allah besok nanti di submitnya. Ya. Karena tadi ada sedikit perubahan judulnya. Tidak mengapa. Jadi besok boleh hantar. Uh, Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3 seperti mana yang ditulis oleh uh, Mr. Songko tadi boleh boleh nampak gambarannya ditulis begitu dan uh, ya dan ah, baik hantar bab 1, bab 2, bab 3 sebagai assignment 2 ya. dan juga assignment 1 pun benda yang sama pun ok Ya. Jadi saya ulang ya. Besok siapkan ya, baik. bab 1, bab 2, bab 3. Hantar sebagai assignment 1 dan hantar sebagai assignment 2. Ya, baik. Start. Bapak, Bapak Adi. Kapan, kapan boleh hantar? I, I explain to you later on. Private. Uh, let me explain. Um, I think I explained before. The, I explained at the beginning of the class. All lecturers have to submit the carry mark on the 6th of June. Which is on my, on uh, 6th of June. Eh? Today is 4th. So, which is on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So, that means I give the students until 5 o'clock tomorrow. Understand. To submit assignment 1 and assignment 2. Because we as lecturer, we have no choice. Yeah, we, unfortunately, we have no choice. We cannot submit after the 6th of June. So, please submit assignment 1 and assignment 2, whatever that you have. It can be the same. Assignment 1 and assignment 2, same thing. It's still acceptable, yeah? Okay. You have. Uh, but please submit before five o'clock tomorrow because I need I need time also to to mark and and then to submit to the uh, to the system. Yeah, boleh ya, Bapak Adi? Bisa? Uh, can I have a time uh, privately after this class, Prof? I want to explain sure. to you. Sure, but my point is still that one. I have no choice. Yes, yes, yes. Understood. Understood very well. Because I have some, I have some circumstances, so I have to explain to you privately. It's all right. Yeah, we can. Uh, after this class, you can stay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Any any other question? Pak Daddy bisa ya? So let let me see. Insyaallah, Ustaz. Alhamdulillah. 
So for now, uh, for assignment two, two students, two PhD candidates have submitted Ahmad Abdul Tawak and Sonko Muhammadi. And for assignment one, And for assignment one, also two PhD candidates who have submitted. Okay. So any, so I'm hoping uh, some of you will submit today or at the latest tomorrow. Okay, just submit whatever that uh, you have, yeah. Because without you submitting, there's no way I can give you the mark. And I want everybody to pass this class. All right. So if there is no questions. Uh, that's all the class for today. Let me remind you to submit all the assignments okay. tomorrow at the latest. And if possible, submit okay. today because I'm starting to mark all the assignments. So the sooner you send, the, the better for me. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Uh, 